Hey, welcome back to Big Board. We're looking at Vietnam from GMT. Uh, earlier on I had posted, I think Friday or Thursday afternoon, I had posted, maybe it was Friday, I had posted a video and showed, not showed, but discussed the Operation Starlight and how I'd made some mistakes with uh, the, the usage of units and the uh, that uh, made it very difficult for the U.S. forces, the Marines, to uh, do their job. Now, in this case, I've managed to use the units more appropriately, I guess is the way we'll put it. <laughs> and uh, so just to kind of summarize everything so we can see how things went down and how very differently each scenario, even though it's the same scenario, how, yeah, how things can pan out differently depending on the choices you make and then, of course, uh, the die rolls make make a difference, right? So uh, let's see. So we started out, you know, up back up in this area, just sort of to the right of the screen. And the idea behind Operation Starlight was that uh, the Vietnamese were a little bit surprised by the uh, speed in which the uh, USMC could react and uh, and act. And so uh, what we ended up doing was we pushed one unit of the Red Third Marine. Uh, division and this one battalion out discovered that that formation was a was in fact this heavy formation here uh, this large regiment much to my surprise and I only had two air support but uh, what they ended up doing was allowing uh, these guys uh, sorry the the VC here to retreat uh, once and then uh, we were, we then conducted another operation since both the both the the VC units were ops complete. Uh, we executed, knowing that this then must be the political section. We we moved this unit to here, killing that unit. And that should have come off the board earlier on. And then this guy would have been uh, ops complete here, and this guy we elected to leave as is. So that then left me with. Uh, just the one formation that I could uh, that I could sort of sally out and take on this guy, uh, this regiment here. He'd already taken one uh, one loss, uh, so he used up one of his four. I think it's four replacement points he had. It doesn't really matter uh, for the moment. Uh, and then uh, because I and I allocated the uh, the artillery from both the HQ and this. Uh, this battalion of independent artillery to this formation conducting a search and destroy operation. So we advanced and attacked, I think, into this hex here. Uh, got, uh, let me just check the results here so I make sure I'm saying it correctly. We put two step losses on the Vietnamese and we took one step loss ourselves with a I'm just trying to see if I can quickly see what the modifiers were. And I can't even read my own handwriting. I think it only ended up being a plus one. Uh, so that, uh, these guys then uh, are all for, for alert. And they uh, took off and had enough. They rolled a six on their alert roll. And even with all the modif modifiers for the scenario specifically, they managed to uh, scoot uh, from, from this hex to here. And that then allowed us to, that then gave us our opportunity here to do our pursuit. And so we went one, two, three, and executed another attack. Now I had two air points allocated. I have this RD allocated. I also had this RD all allocated, but he can't reach, you know, the range is too far. But uh, this guy can, uh, can make it uh, because there's one, only one intervening hex in between. I think that's how those dots work, right? Uh, so, you know, if I had had this uh, cruiser, if I had been more thoughtful and anticipating potential retreats by uh, the VC, I may have wanted to have had this uh, cruiser in here, and then we could have used his uh, combat power as well. Nevertheless, uh, by the time we ended up uh, doing terrain modifications here, there was a minus three for fighting in the mountains. And uh, we received a plus three on the pursuit roll and then uh, one for it being a three to two attack, I believe, by the time we added up all the factors. Uh, that gave us a final result on the 15 column for these guys. 
they they rolled a uh, we we rolled a ended up being a net seven. Uh, so they took three step losses, and that was uh, in addition to the there was a there was a initial attack and then one more attack. So that uh, that added up to more replacement steps, more replacement step losses than they had. They would then have to lose this unit, and so they were eliminated. Now, interestingly enough, these guys also took losses during the, the activities, and they ended up taking a cumulative two, either two or three step losses. So they came very close to the edge as well. Uh, in, so this is still not ideal. We, we were not uh, playing our best based on my current understanding of the, of the rules at the moment. Now, there's a lot more to it as well. Once you get more units on the board, there are more things you should be doing or could be doing. Uh, you may want to uh, flip to patrol at the end of an operation. So uh, this we could uh, put, put a patrol marker on these guys at the end of a clear and secure uh, op, op, I believe. There's also the ability to uh, be in hold mode. And patrol mode is interesting because you may conduct an operation and then decide to go into patrol mode. And that will then increase the movement point cost because of the zone's control of all the units around, the enemy units around you and uh, slow them down. So that might allow you then to conduct another operation, bringing in some additional forces and, and go, going at it, right? So anyway, I thought I'd just show you the final uh, combat uh, that I executed here for this particular second, second run through, actually third run through of this scenario. And what I'm going to do now is go back into the scenario book and look for something that's a little larger that I can play. But I do have a couple of uh, other games coming and I'm going to pause on the, the Vietnam stuff for the moment. Because um, I, I actually also am kind of keen to get uh, Next War Vietnam out on the table as well. But uh, we can't go spoiling Mitch Land uh, playing you know, this game uh, that he developed and then also one of his other games. Uh, back to back that'd be that'd be too much love to that guy all right talk to you all soon and obviously i'm joking about mitch he's a good bud of mine talk to all of you soon and uh keep rolling those dice ciao